Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here, and Fallout 4 is a pretty big game, a vast open world, dozens of settlements that need your help, and a variety of quests. However, Bethesda, at various points in time during development, was preparing for it to be even bigger, with multiple quests, characters, mechanics, and more that were planned, but ultimately had to be given the axe from the game. The reasons behind it range from time and resource limitations to writing inconsistencies. A month ago we took a look at some of these, but today we're going to take a look at five more pieces of Fallout 4's cut content that just almost made it into the game. To start this list off, we have a cut quest called Off the Grid. This mission was never completed by Bethesda, however thankfully they left behind enough scripts and audio files that give us a very good idea of what it would have consisted of. The quest would occur when the player became no longer allied to the Institute. After that happened at whatever point in time, Synths would for some reason attack and take control of Diamond City's radio tower. They would also take a number of hostages. Essentially you and whatever faction you chose, be it the Brotherhood, Minutemen, or Railroad, would then be tasked with eliminating the Synths in a battle and saving the city. Once completed, whichever faction you chose to side with would actually leave behind a garrison in Diamond City, just in case another threat were to ever arise. Similarly, in the release version of Fallout 4, whichever faction you chose to help destroy the Institute with, or the Institute themselves, would end up garrisoning Diamond City. So Bethesda sort of kept that element in the release version. In the end, I'm not entirely sure why this quest was removed. Not a lot of it was finished, so it could have been due to time limitations. It's also possible that Bethesda just decided it didn't really fit in with their whole story. A big focal point of Fallout 4 was all the factions being good guys for their own reasons, but attacking a town and murdering a bunch of people to death makes that image difficult to maintain. And number two is a cut ending concerning both the Brotherhood of Steel and the Minutemen. Should you destroy the Institute with the Minutemen in the base game, your ability to continue to progress through the Brotherhood of Steel's ranks will be removed. However, cut dialogue suggests there was going to be an alternative. Should you pass a speech check, you were supposed to get the chance to maintain your status with the Brotherhood, even if you destroyed the Institute with the Minutemen. You would still be awarded the rank of Sentinel and granted a jetpack by Elder Maxon, though he and Captain Kells would briefly scold you for allowing untrained civilians to take on the risk of attacking the Institute. The rest of the Brotherhood soldiers would occasionally make comments like, I can't believe the Minutemen had that kind of firepower, and even occasionally get frustrated with you for not letting the Brotherhood do the job themselves. Proctor Quinn, on the other hand, would instead commend you for the job, saying it was wise to use the Minutemen as cannon fodder rather than Brotherhood soldiers. Just to be clear, some of Proctor Quinn's statements, as well as some of the static comments made made by Brotherhood soldiers can still be heard in the release version if you destroy the Institute with the Minutemen and don't go hostile with the Brotherhood, though Maxon and Kells will have nothing at all to say to you, and you can't achieve the Sentinel rank nor the jetpack. This ending was pretty much completed. The appropriate dialogue and scripts were ready to go, but Bethesda seems to have just decided it didn't fit in with what they were going for and stripped it from the game. Our number three spot goes to the Enclave Patriotic Radio Station. This was one of the major radio stations in Fallout 3. It was essentially the Enclave's little propaganda network that would play patriotic music, as well as occasional announcements from the self-declared government. Well, a look into the game's files suggests the radio station was going to make a comeback in Fallout 4. Now, this seems a bit misplaced, considering the Enclave have literally no presence in the game itself. Their power armor lays around, but they themselves didn't leave much behind other than that. The radio station also lacks any attached songs in the files. All we have is its name. There are a few unused songs in Fallout 4's music and audio files with patriotic undertones, so it's possible that those were planned for the Enclave. Enclave Station. I'm somewhat enticed to believe that this must have been cut out earlier in development. Perhaps with this and their MK power armor, Bethesda wanted the Enclave to play a somewhat bigger role, or at least reference them a bit more, with an actual story. But nonetheless, all we can really do is speculate. Coming in at number 4 is the Atlantic Offices building. In the glowing sea, there's a chance you'll stumble upon this location. It's a huge collapsed skyscraper, without much inside. Being in the glowing sea, your only real concerns are ghouls and terrifying levels of radiation. It feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity for some cool and environmental storytelling by Bethesda. Well, that may be because the Atlantic Office's building was actually supposed to be in Boston's financial district. Scripts as well as unused cells in the game, accessible with console commands, reveal that the Atlantic Office's building not only wasn't going to be in the glowing sea, but a fully accessible location with multiple floors, possibly overrun with raiders and gunners, and its own story. According to one modder on the Nexus, the Atlantic Office's building was supposed to be pretty huge, but Bethesda had only completed about 20% of it. Thankfully, this modder did actually do his best to restore all of it, but again, with only 20% completed, he had to take some major creative liberties, but he did a really great job and even added its own story. As with everything else on this list, Bethesda's motivations for doing what they did are entirely unknown. Perhaps they thought the financial district was getting a little bit crowded as is and the glowing sea could use some more structures, or maybe due to the fact that this thing was planned to be so large and massive, they simply thought it would take up too many resources and wasn't worth the effort. Finally, last on this list is my personal favorite, that is paintball guns. To be fair, this was actually cut 
cut from the Contraptions Workshop DLC. The DLC's files contained a huge amount of ready-to-go textures, animations, and weapons that would allow you, the player, to literally shoot paintballs rather than bullets. On top of that all, there were also going to be some additional not-so-serious weapons that were cut from the DLC as well. These include firework mortars. I have no idea why Bethesda decided not to go through with these additions. In my opinion, the Contraptions Workshop DLC was the most underwhelming. However, had Bethesda included paintballs and fireworks, I may reconsider that stance. Thankfully, like everything else on this list, there is a mod that is able to restore the feature, though you do also need the DLC. Yay. But with that number 5 out of the way, that about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed, like ratings are always very much appreciated, and which piece of cut content do you think you'd miss the most? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Links to mods that allow you to restore much of what we talked about will be in the description as well. Keep in mind, since these mods really just restore removed assets, assets that were already in the game, many of these mods are also PS4 and Xbox One compatible. Again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Peace out everybody!